Good evening, everyone. Time for the final mission into the Maw of Chaos. Let's roll. Here's our objectives. The keepers tell you that Constantine's gone into the Maw of Chaos. You get to go in after him. If you can swap the fake eye the Hammerites made for the real eye he's using in the ritual, that should put a damper on his plans. The more beasts come through that portal, the more get through to the Hammer Temple and the city. The Hammers tell you that if you don't destroy the portal before Constantine finishes his ritual, it may remain open forever, even if the trickster's plan fails. I note, as always, that the briefing cinematic has been separately added to the playlist, so let's go. We're given no opportunity to make purchases in this mission, which should come as no surprise. We don't have any loot to go after, so all we need to do is get to the end, making sure we have one of each type of elemental arrow to take out the portal. Let's look at our map. It's very cryptic and not too much help, but we have stairways, then we have ice crystals, then we have a river, then we have a giant tree, and then... Lord knows what all this other stuff means, but uh, I'll tell you that this mission isn't ghostable right off the bat because we have to use a fire arrow to close the portal and there are two AIs that stand right next to it and will get alerted, period. So we're not going to successfully ghost the mission, but we can at least ghost the rest of it. So let me check out what I start with so I know exactly what sorts of arrows I need to pick up get off to the right of the portal and wait for the first insect beast and monkey man to get through. Okay, I have a water arrow, I have a fire arrow, I have a moss arrow, and I have a gas arrow. Good, I shouldn't have to pick anything up. Unless I plan on using a moss arrow somewhere, which I actually think might be necessary. We also have some reading material. Garrett, all we can offer you in aid are these crystals and this passage from one of our oldest books. The trickster's works, such as they are, are made of the unformed stuff of the world, not the proper materials the builder hath taught. Fire and water, earth and air, these are for the tricksters, brick and beam are to us. But like their master, they are flawed. His maw is anchored by raw elements, and therein lies its weakness. Destroy each of its anchors with its opposite, and the maw must then follow in their wake. So, it's a fancy way of telling us when we get to the portal, water negates fire, fire negates water, and so on. So once these two guys are past us, we should be able to get through the tunnel. Now this floor is stone, but all of this is tile and will register as such. There's no need to pick up any of these gas arrows, although they're plentiful unless you're planning on taking out AIs, which obviously ghosting disallows us from doing. These purple side tunnels are awesome. And, you know, they're pretty obviously the way we're supposed to get through here. These critters will keep spawning infinitely. There's no end to them. You can't wait them all out. You just have to sneak through the gaps. <clears throat> can't have that. Should probably have saved before I made the attempt to make that descent, but... Okay, let's try again. Much better. So you see some lovely, darkened, normal stone down here. I have to make sure no one heard that landing. They didn't. Good. You can just blow right down all of this. Save here because... You can get spotted again as you go. I was able to make a silent descent to another one of these lovely purple side passages around the main stairs. More gas arrows here for those who are interested. I think there are a total of seven gas arrows. I've passed four so far. So this just takes us right back to the other side of the homes there. So we need to be careful. 
<laughs> Obviously, that didn't work out. Let's see if we can't make our descent here. And it seems that he turns. So let's let's see what his alternate facing is. I saw him turn a second ago. And this other guy's getting close enough, we need to wait for him to go by anyway. Ah, that's handy. So if he'll turn again, now maybe we can get to this tunnel. Excellent! Excellent, excellent. As always, take extra special care descending. We were lucky. We were able to keep that quiet, but You'll notice that the sides are stone, and you can get up on them to walk, and they're darkened. So really, getting down these stairs isn't as much of a problem as you might think. We're going to have to cross here, so be mindful of the fact that there's still people above us, and maybe some bad guys coming up from below us. And now we've hit a bug. There we go. Sometimes it does that. It doesn't register the texture change for your footstep noises. Not a whole lot you can do about it except basically wait for the glitch to end or reload. Alright, we got some people coming, so let's get up to the side and wait them out. There are a couple of tricky spots ghost-wise, but for the most part, sneaking through the mall isn't very difficult at all. And uh, since there's no loot to pick up, all you have to do is get through it. For my money, it's even easier than Strange Bedfellows, except for its two hard spots. There's one spot in my head in particular that is going to be very hard, but it's only one spot. Unlike Escape, which has many, many, many such spots. We're almost past the point where these bad guys will keep generating, which is nice. Once we make this drop, it's over on the left side, we don't have to worry about the uh, spawners anymore. This lava flow is making it difficult for me to listen for alerts. But I think I'm okay if for no other reason than no one is around. And that's it. We're through the first section. That wasn't bad at all, was it? We're coming up on my, uh self-identified hard part already. Those of you who are intimately familiar with this know what I'm talking about. Stay away from these ice crystals. There are water arrows at the bases you can pick up if you want to, but if you get too close to the crystals, they will damage you. Ah yes, here it is. We have three randomly hopping frogs, and we just kind of have to get across. Okay. I found the shadow I was looking for, but it was a bit too late. And obviously, it's difficult to control your momentum 
when you're walking on this ice. I guess that's part of the plan. So anyway, you can look at the frogs, but they cover a pretty wide range and they do so randomly and they're immune to the ill effects of the ice crystals, so. You just kind of have to hope, live on a prayer and such, as you rush across to the other shadows. That none of the critters will spot you. And even then they can still bump into you, so you have to be careful. Oh, I guess they can't bump into me after all. I was misinformed about that at least. Okay, if I stand up there, they'll see me. That's good to know. And if they bump directly into me, they'll see that too. Let's slow down a second. The biggest problem with the frogs is their utter unpredictability. You never know which way a given hop will take them. You never know how far they'll go on a given hop either. Just kind of have to hope for the best. Do your best to wait until all three of them are behind me and and facing away from me. Spotted by one. Now let's not try that again. I'm just, I can't be certain whether that worked or not. But I'm certain that did. Good. Down the slope. Quickly into the shadows. Let's not try that again. Now you have to move pretty quickly here too. Because one of these guys eventually stops in a position where he'll spot us if we're not careful. <clears throat> but ideally what you want to do is Get across here silently when you have an opening. Then you can blow past all three of them. And then if you make that jump, you should be set. That was all very easy. No real risk here, as long as you break right. Now it's time to 
Head down another ice flow. No monsters to worry about. And get to the bottom. And save. Time for a swim now. I don't like the Maw of Chaos much just because it is. Both because it's a very easy mission, which bothers me for the last mission, and it seems like rather than go for quality or challenging stealth, they decided to just go balls out crazy. And the reason I like the sword is because it had some of the crazy in it, but that wasn't all that it had going for it. The sword still had a lot of good stealth and sneaking in it on top of the more sparingly used crazy stuff. Which is what I appreciated about it. You do get a chance to take a breath over here to the side, which you'll definitely want to take advantage of. And then... It's just a matter of aiming your fall into that neat little tube we saw earlier. Like that. Surface and save, we're done with the swim. Now we're getting up to the second hard part. The things that have huh. now that's big. consistently given us the most trouble in every mission will engage in a repeat performance here. I'm talking about the spiders. There are three monkey men that patrol hey. that patrol around the tree, but generally speaking, it's it's dark enough, their patrol's big enough that they're virtually non-factors. Which is kind of nice. But we need to head into the tree as we have an opportunity to do so. And once we're in there, we've got a boatload of spiders to deal with. Because we do need one extra moss arrow, I'm going to pick it up in here because this is the place where moss arrows can be had. I wonder if we can get up to that ledge. Nope, we got spotted. It looks like it shouldn't be too hard just to get up there when everyone's backs are turned. Seems like that window should exist. But as you can see, as spiders are prone to do, they move about the floor of this chamber without any predictability. Randomness is the death knell to many a ghost attempt. A badly timed turn from a random patroller has been my undoing many, many times throughout this playthrough. <sighs> saw me. This, I feel like this ought to be possible, it's just going to be hard. Just keep an eye on him and try and make a run for it.
Did somebody see me? No! Good. That hiss you heard is from one of the ones on the upper ledges. So we got up here without getting spotted and grabbed my one moss arrow. Excellent. One of the hardest maneuvers done. Now we need to get back out the same way, because although getting to that ledge was quite possible, getting up the rest of them is not. But there is, fortunately, another possibility for getting up the tree. In fact, let's test that out right now. Okay, that didn't work. But okay, so I need to aim it a little closer. Maybe I even need two of them. Or maybe I can just jump down without bothering with rope arrows. But... The rope arrow. Well, yeah, the rope arrows seem seem overly complex. I think just waiting and dropping down is going to end up being the simplest option. This gonna have to rely on some good timing and the fact that the floor is silent there we go now let's get back outside away from these spidery buttholes and save once again we need that extra moss arrow but apart from that We are going to rope. Okay, I need to fire the rope a little higher. Hope I can get on the correct rope, first of all, but if not, I can try my best to jump to the other one. But I think I got on the correct one. Yes, I did. Perfect. Let's retrieve that rope. Now from this branch... We want to get on that one. Is it possible? Yes. Did I manage it there? Oh no. Not even close. You can probably already see that arch with the two bl big blue crystals. That's where we're headed, but... All right, let's let's move a little closer. That should make things easier. Staying on the outside of this tree is definitely the only way to ghost to this part. If you go inside, you have to you have to contend with small ledges with stationary spiders on them. Of course, out here you have to contend with Garrett's inability to hold on to a rope. <sighs> Let's retrieve.
retrieve that arrow. And finally, from here, we should be able to just run up onto what would have been our exit from the tree in the first place. Now up here is the part we needed the rope arrow for. The good news is that this is the last spider cave at the game. The bad news is that he's pretty tough to get past. <clears throat> You see how there's one big light patch with shadows here and on the other side. So what we're going to have to do is actually pretty simple. We just need to moss the ground over there so that we can do a run and jump into the shadows. That didn't work out. Didn't go far enough. That did the trick. Nothing there but a first alert, people. That's what we're all about. Now this, this cave is loaded with spiders. They have the same unfortunate tendency to get stuck that many of their prior counterparts have had, but there are enough shadows that sneaking through this cave shouldn't be too challenging. With the exception of that guy at the entrance, of course, but... Kinda need to work your way around the circle here. Oh, there's, there's a second one stuck now. Okay, better go this way. Done. Interesting. We are now clear of the spider cave. This might look somewhat familiar to you, although it's stylistically different and the consequences are more dire. This is basically the same puzzle we had to deal with in the training mission. Make sure you stay in the shadow. If you venture into the light, those gems on the walls will spring traps on you. But really, this is all very simple. This is, this is the only one I remember there being no clear way across. But. Maybe it's a jump. Or maybe it's the middle. Yeah, it's the middle. They didn't code it particularly well, but that looked like the darkest spot, and that turned out to be right. Hey, the laugh is back! Alright, we're very near the end now. Two monkey men patrol this route, but there are plenty of places where you can wait for them to pass by. I need to make sure nobody heard me, but I don't think they were close enough. 
No patrollers in this segment. Enjoy. And now we come upon the reason the Maw of Chaos cannot be ghosted. I've already explained it, but I'll do I'll do so again once I get there. Here at the bottom, we find Constantine's portal. Let's just disable that portal and give the hammers a fighting chance. Okay, well, I don't want to make the mistake of crossing into the light and giving up the ghost, you know, 20 seconds earlier than I would otherwise have to, but... Let's just disable that portal and give the hammers a fighting chance. So there is the portal. We have an explicit objective. We have to destroy it. Doing so requires us to hit each element with its opposite anchor. Well, that shouldn't be too tough. Hit the fire corner with your water arrow. That's a first alert unavoidable because the insect beast does not move even if you wait 10 hours like I did in Crags Cleft he doesn't move at all so you, you only have one arrow you have to make these shots count and I think the the moss to gas is the hardest shot to make but there we go now with that done hit the moss corner with a gas arrow our ghost is still intact, but it's a it's about to disappear. There's no way to avoid alerting both of these guys when we hit the water corner with the fire arrow. Just absolutely no way to do it. So that bust, we have to accept, sorry to say, the Maw of Chaos cannot be ghosted. Because while we're allowed to disable the portal, the alert that comes with it isn't excused. And now we come to the end. <sighs> Pretty simple. Uh, we don't want to take that little bit of damage. So here's Constantine, he's in the middle of his ritual. All we have to do is get to the middle, replace the eye, get back to a hiding place and wait for him to finish. The whole red star surface makes tile noise, tile level noise. Burning heat, fences char, lazy sheet, black and tar, man flesh meat, melting gears, dance and leap. Man fool's fear come to reap. Call the fire, call the red. Bring thee forth, past not dead. But generally speaking, he moves slow enough that we can get in and out with no issues. Just have to be careful doing it. Rise and fall, river flood, rain and squall, churning mud, dam break all, sea waves wash, swampy squall, sewer slosh, drain pipe stall, call the wave, call the blue, brings it forth world anew. So with that, we're good. Our new objective is to wait for Constantine to complete his ritual, so let's do that. Toil wall and make call earth, call the brown, brings a back world thrown down. Night 
smother light, black brick lamp done with bright, do and damp, smother tight, dark and hide, fools he sight, stay inside, fear the night, call the dark, call the black, brings he forth, I call it back. You do fail the mission if you let Constantine finish his ritual without replacing the eye, but that should be obvious. Open for me! Open to me! Open my way! Open the path! Open for me! Open! There it is! There it is, everybody! That's Thief Gold! We... One last round of statistics. The Maw took us 24 minutes 40 seconds. There was no loot, no locks picked, no backstabs or knockouts, no damage dealt or taken, no healing taken, nothing and no one killed. The entire game took us 31 hours, 5 minutes, 50 seconds. We found 34,356 loot, which is to say all of the loot. We dealt 290 damage. We killed 9 hammer haunts and returned to the cathedral at 30 damage each. And to the training dummy and our sparring partner in the training mission, we did 10 damage each, bringing the total to 290. We received no damage throughout the entire game. We successfully ghosted 13 of the 15 missions. We were not able to ghost the Haunted Cathedral or into the Maw of Chaos because in both instances we had to deploy a fire arrow which, in my mind, unavoidably alerted a couple of AIs, making the missions unghostable. This has been fun. I'll make sure to connect the ending cinematic to the end of the playlist for those who are interested in watching. And Thief 2 is up next. I will see you all then. Thanks for watching. This has been Let's Really Ghost Thief Gold. Bye-bye.